Good morning, friends. We are back with a new math lesson today. We are on 9.3 today, and we are continuing to work with extended multiplication facts. Today, we're going to work on mental extended multiplication, and we're going to do it using the break apart strategy, which we've done before finding area. So you should have your math journal, a pencil, and a piece of paper like usual, and we're going to start with our slate work. On your piece of paper, would you go ahead and write down the answers to these extended multiplication and division facts? The first one is 5 times 40. You would look for the basic fact 5 times 4 and extend it, so 5 times 40 is 200. What is 3 times 60? 3 times 6 is 18, so 3 times 60 is 180. 250 divided by 5 is, so again, look for the basic fact, 25 divided by 5, and extend it. So 250 divided by 5 is 50. Let's look at these three. 7 times 70 equals what? 7 times 70 equals 490. What is 4 times 80? 4 times 8 is 32, so 4 times 80 is 320. Division, 420 divided by 6. Look for the basic division fact, 42 divided by 6. 42 divided by 6 is 7, so 420 divided by 6 is 70. Last three. What times 7 is 280? 40 times 7 is 280. 7 times what number is 560? So again, think about 7 times what is 56 and extend that number. So 7 times 80 is 560. Last one, 630 divided by what? equals 90. 630 divided by what equals 90? 630 divided by 7 equals 90. All right, for the math message, I'd like you to open your math journal back to the two pages that have the masses of Northern American birds. It's pages 277 and 278. If you need to hit pause, go ahead. And using those pages, I'd like you to think about the answer to these two questions. It says, could five blue jays have a greater total mass than one Atlantic puffin? Could five blue jays have a greater, to sorry, a total mass less than one Atlantic puffin? I'm going to try to solve this mentally. And let's look at it together. I have the poster here as well. You can be looking on your journal page. But for these two questions, we are looking at the Atlantic Puffin and the Blue Jay. So the first question asks, if we have five Blue Jays, could their total mass be greater than one Atlantic Puffin? Well, a Blue Jay we see could be up to 100 grams. So if we had five of those larger blue jays, if five of them each had a 100 gram mass, they would have a total mass of 500. Is 500 greater than what an Atlantic puffin could be? Yes, because if you are looking at a smaller puffin, one that's say 400 grams, 500 grams of blue jays is greater than one 400 gram Atlantic puffin. The second question asked, could five blue jays have a total mass that's less than one Atlantic puffin? So in this case, we'd wanna look at the smaller blue jays. So if we had five blue jays that each had a mass of 70 grams, they would have a total mass of 350 grams. 
So if we took five smaller blue jays and they had a mass of 350 grams, is that smaller than one Atlantic puffin? It is because 350 is smaller than 400 and certainly 350 is smaller than 650. But the answer to both of these questions, could five blue jays have a greater mass than one? Yes. Could their total mass be less than one puffin? The answer to that is also yes. All right, we are gonna solve some more extended facts mentally using the break apart strategy. Let's look at some examples on the screen. The first question says, what is the total mass of six 10 gram black cap chickadees. So you do not need to be looking at the um, poster in your journal. You can just look at the screen. If we're trying to find the total mass of six 10 gram chickadees, we would just be thinking six times 10. And I think all of us can mentally multiply by 10 pretty easily and see that six times 10 would be 60 grams. Let's look down at the next question. It says, what is the total mass of six 12 gram chickadees? So in this case, we're trying to solve six times 12. Now, for most of us, multiplying by 12 is not as easy to do mentally as multiplying by 10. So the strategy that I'd like you to use is to break 12 up into easier numbers. So instead of six times 12, we could think of it as six times 10 and six times two. Six times 10 is 60. And we know that six times two is 12. And I would add those two products to see that six times 12 is 72. Now, you don't have to break 12 up into 10 and two. You could break it up however you would like that's easy to do mentally. So you could also break 12 into six and six. In that case, you would have six times six plus six times six. Six times six is 36. Six times six, again 36. And if you add those two products, you would still be left with 72. So when we had this problem, six times 12, we took the harder factor, 12, and broke it up into two easier numbers, either 10 and 2 or 6 and 6. Let's look at some more. What is the total mass of eight 25-gram mountain bluebirds? So the problem we're trying to answer is 8 times 25. Now, some of you might be able to do that mentally, but if not, you can take one of these factors, either the eight or the 25, and break it into easier numbers. Let's start by breaking apart 25. I could break apart 25 into eight times 20 and eight times five. Eight times 20, I know eight times two is 16, so eight times 20 must be 160. And eight times five is 40. So when I add those two products, 160 plus 40, my answer is 200. So eight times 25 must be 200. Now, you could also, in this problem, break apart the eight instead of the 25. I could break apart the eight into four and four. In that case, I would have four times 25 plus four times 25. And when I think about money, it's easy for me to know that four times 25 is 100, four times 25 is 100, and when I add those two, I still get 200. So when you have eight times 25, you can break apart either one of the factors into easier numbers to be able to solve mentally. I'm writing down the answers, but it's just to show my mental process. 
Let's do one more just like it. What is the mass of 21 six gram hummingbirds? So in this case, we are multiplying 21 times six. To me, it makes sense to break apart 21 into easier factors. So I would think about this as 20 times six and one times six. 20 times six is two times six and extend it, 120. One times six is six. So when I add those two products, I get 126. So 21 times six is 126. In this problem, 21 times six, it made sense for me to break apart the 21 because if I broke apart the six, I'd still be left multiplying by this sort of difficult factor over here. It's not impossible. You could have broken it into 21 times three and 21 times three, it would have worked, but it seemed easier to break 21 into 20 and one. All right, let's look now on journal page 281. Journal page 281. It says using mental math to, to multiply. Solve each number story in your head. Use number models and words to show your thinking. Let's do number one together. It says the mass of one American white pelican is about eight kilograms. What would be the mass of 16 eight kilogram pelicans? So my thinking, and you can do this however you'd like, but to me, I know that I have to multiply, whoop, 16, oh, sorry. I know I have to multiply 16 by eight. For me, I'm going to break apart 16 into 10 and six. So I would solve this by saying 10 times eight is 80. Six times eight is 48. So 80 plus 40, oop, 48 equals 128. So my answer is about 128 kilograms. Let's look at it even differently. I broke 16 into 10 and six. Let's try it another way. If I was doing 16 times eight, and instead I wanted to break 16 into eight and eight, I could say eight times eight is 64, and eight times eight is 64, and then I would add those two products to equal 128. So how you break apart the factors is completely up to you. My only suggestion is you wanna break them up in a way that makes it easy to do the multiplication mentally. Would you please go ahead and complete the rest of this page? There are only two more problems and then work on math boxes 9.3 and later on today homelink 9.3 good luck and i'll see you back here tomorrow